For centuries, this simple sailing ship had carried passengers and cargo around the globe. Until, in the 19th century, it would change forever. Suddenly ships became faster, reliable and safe. People could enjoy comfort and luxury in massive ships as technology improved over time. Today, we time travel back into the past to see the events that unfold within ocean liners. For the early centuries of mankind, boats have become their main transport to cross over vast oceans, used for the art of war to simply carry passengers. Boats in the early years was powered by rowing or sailing. Eventually, sailing ships became the dominant type and eventually these ships became larger and more space for passengers to ride on. Full rig ships were introduced in the 15th century following the discovery of the Americas, which would lay the foundation of the voyages throughout the Atlantic. However, one certain thing was that ships were made out of wood. The techniques in making metal ships weren't discovered making sailing ships weak and slow. Even the famous Mayflower could only reach a top speed of three knots and was prone to storms. Aside from those, sailing ships weren't that comfortable. Some passengers were cramped and seasick from the violent motions of the sea. It was until the industrial era where the steam engines were introduced which revolutionized shipping propulsion. It was Savannah that became the first ever steamship to cross the Atlantic. It was until the SS Great Britain, where it introduced a fully iron hull and a steam engine. It was also one of the first ships to use a propeller engine instead of a paddle. It could reach a top speed of 11 knots. SS Great Britain was considered as the first ever ocean liner, and the largest in the mid-1840s to 1850s. Though it would take some time for steam engine to become the main propulsion choice for ships, one ship stood out in particular. Meet the SS Atlantic. Unlike other ships, Atlantic was made more comfortable and more enjoyable. With a top-class dining saloon and lounges, SS Atlantic's luxury attracted many people to ride ships in the first place. Not only that, but Atlantic could also travel passengers faster than ever, only taking 9 to 10 days to cross the Atlantic. The Atlantic were like a leap forward into the future focusing on comfort, and they just did that. Though revolutionary, the Atlantic still heavily relied on sails. But these were the days of iron hulled ships. And if ocean liners truly had to prove themselves, they had to be bigger and faster. And just 11 years after the introduction of the Atlantic, a new ship would catch the attention of the public. The ship was called SS Servia, or RMS Servia, a ship forgotten to history. Atlantic had been illusionary in her day of 3,700 tons, but now ships has grown in size. A huge technological leap had made it possible, thanks to the introduction of steel. Iron though strong, it was still expense of its weight. But in the mid-1880s, a new material had been introduced that made iron redundant, steel. This metal was an alloy that combined the properties of iron and carbon to create a much stronger, lightweight material. Once Servia was launched, she was the third of the largest ships and was the first major steel ocean liner. Not only that, but the lights transitioned to all lamps to electrical bulbs, which destroyed the risk of starting a fire. She was also fast for her time, which was two miles, faster than the Oceanic class. With the introduction of steam engines, the Servia didn't always have to rely on the sails anymore and instead used it for backup or auxiliary power. However, much like the Atlantic, Servia still carried the old compound engine with a single propeller. For ships to become faster and larger, this had to change, and did just that in 1888, just a short seven years since Servia was introduced and a new generation of ships were already made. Enter the SS City of New York and her sister ship City of Paris. City of New York wasn't just big. It was fast it could steam along at 20 knots. She and her sister ship stole the speed record from Umbria and Etruria, 
another revolutionary ship. The success behind this was simple, the engines. Servia and Atlantic used a type of engine called the compound steam engine. However, for city of New York's case, her engines were improved making it much bigger and could propel ships faster. This type of steam engine would later become popular up into the 20th century, powering even Olympic and the Titanic. But that's a story to tell later. Now the steam engines were a big deal, but New York's real secret was below the waterline. This was the first time that a pair of propeller shafts were mounted on an ocean liner. Not only that, but City of New York's safety was like a leap into 100 years. City of New York's bulkheads was enforced with an inner skin, and the bulkheads rose up into the upper deck in order to avoid water to spill over. Of course, the City of New York and her sister ship were luxurious and comfortable, though the main revolutionary development on the City of New York was her safety. On 1890, its safety would prove itself when City of Paris engines exploded. Luckily, the ship's subdivision proved successful and she was not in danger of sinking. The City of New York and her sister ship was innovative, especially with its twin screw propulsion system, but it was more of a transition ship. It also still included auxiliary sails, although rarely used. SS City of New York proved ocean liners can be large and fast at the same time. However, City of New York didn't felt like it broke free from the age of sail. And just a year after City of New York was introduced, a new generation of ocean liners that would finally break free from the age of sail. Enter the RMS Teutonic, a ship without sail. RMS Teutonic was built by the White Star Line with the dual purpose of serving as an ocean liner and a potential auxiliary cruiser for the British Royal Navy in the times for war. And during the Boer War, it proved its military versatility, sporting 4.7 inches guns. Not only that, but our MS Teutonic was the first ever armed merchant cruiser. Our MS Teutonic's revolutionary dual purpose as an armed auxiliary cruiser would later mean large ocean liners at the time could become a naval chess piece during a naval war and securing naval supremacy. Not only that, but our MS Teutonic was also the first generational ocean liners to have no square rig sails, only relying on the powerful twin triple expansion engines. Our MS Teutonic was a more forward-looking design, fully embracing steam power as the future of ocean liners. And compared to the city of New York, the Teutonics was faster and had superior engine performance, reaching a speed of 20 knots, almost fast as the Titanic. Teutonics luxury was also top class. It had a better balance of luxury for the upper class while accommodating large numbers of immigrants. Teutonics had made many achievements, such as the first ship to become fully steam and the first dual purpose ship. This blend of commercial and military functionality along with its advanced steam propulsion and focus on speed, made Teutonic a groundbreaking ship in the late 19th century. Teutonic was pioneering ship when it was launched, but by the mid-1890s, Teutonic started to become obsolete. It also became less prominent in transatlantic travel, and because of its dual-purpose design, some compromises were made in the ship's layout and design. This made it less optimized for passenger comfort, and eventually passengers lost interest by the 1893 because of a new comfortable ship that would take the glory of largest ship. Meet the RMS Campania, one of the most luxurious and comfortable ship during the 1890s. RMS Campania was a smartly proportioned liner launched just three years after the Teutonic but she was the largest passenger ship ever afloat at the time of her launch at 12,500 gross registered tons. But ships were getting bigger all the time. Campania's real technological leap was in with her engines. Similar towards City of New York's, the Campania set out to sea with the largest triple expansion steam engines ever fitted to a steamship, primarily Cunard. These engines stood up 47 feet high, about the height of a three-story building. This immense power drove the vessel at a recording braking speed of 23.5 knots. 
The ocean liner could now cross the Atlantic in just five days and 12 hours. Just 50 years ago, it would have taken you twice a week to cross the Atlantic in the fastest steamship. The ship boasted to enormous smokestacks. Here at last was a very modern looking steamship. And now, six years after the Campania was introduced, a ship came along and combined the properties of the original vessels. But now, with technological advancements, it was safe to say it was not an ocean liner, but a super one. Meet the Kaiser Wilhelm der Gross with her incredible for funnel stacks. This ship had gone down as the first ever super liner and this was the peak of ships of the 19th century. But that wasn't just all. The ship was infinitely more luxurious than Atlantic had been just 30 years prior. Inside the ship, Kaiser boasted palatial saloons and lounges with a first-class dining saloon. It was like a luxury hotel. Kaiser Wilhelm der Gross was the first liner to boast suites and far more amenities than any luxurious ships. Not only this, her safety was beyond the city of New York's one, having a double bottom and 20 lifeboats, unlike the city of New York's, which were 12. The Campania's enormous engines made her capture the blue ribbon, but Kaiser's power triple expansion steam engines and her increased length made her faster. The first liner to carry for smoke stacks. These carried smokes from the boiler rooms and weren't just for looks. The world was impressed by the sight of a four funnel ship. Overnight, every liner that had been built before this German superliner seemed incredibly outdated and ships with less than for funnels would appear weak. Kaiser Wilhelm der Gross was impressive, and its for funnels definitely changed ocean liners. But it was the pioneering ships like the Atlantic, Servia, City of New York, Teutonic, and Campania that had made new technologies and helped build the future of ocean liners. The old sailing ships from the 18th century later became outdated and retired from service. And in the 20th century, a new technological arms race would begun starting the age of four funneled ocean liners. However, that would be a story to tell another day.